and welcome to this explainer about Dask. My name is Stephanie Kermer and I'm a senior data scientist at Saturn Cloud. If you're here, you might be wondering what is Dask actually? Or you might have a little bit of an idea, you may have heard of it, but you're not necessarily sure how it can apply to you or it can be useful in your own machine learning work. In short, Dask is a framework that allows you to add parallelization to Python code you already have and already understand. You can use the same APIs as Pandas and Scikit-Learn and NumPy, but now you can add fully parallel computation and parallel data objects to it. So I'm gonna explain in this video exactly what those two things are, parallel computation and parallel data objects, and how Dask makes those things available and how you can use them in your own data science. Consider the problem of having a data set that's too large for memory. You've got too much data, right? Think about it this way. You have X amount of, of memory that you can use to hold a single data set in session. If you add multiple machines to that, you can now get X amount of memory multiplied times Y number of machines. So you can scale up your amount of space to hold data in, indefinitely, depending on how many machines you get. Problem is, you still have one data object, right? You've got a data frame, or you've got a really big list, or you've got something like that. What Dask enables is that you can still have your data in a data frame format or a list or whatever you're kind of working with, or an array, for example. But you can now chunk it out into different smaller little data frames that are all united under the Dask object framework. You still get to work with the object like it was a single thing. You get to work with a single data frame and pretend like it's a single data frame and not really think too much about the fact that it's a lot of little data frames distributed out to all of the resource workers that you've got. In practical terms, what this means is that you can load data directly from disk or from a cloud data storage, wherever you're keeping your data, directly to a desk data frame. And then you have an object that is natively a distributed data object, but you can interact with it just like it was a pandas data frame and it will have pretty much the same API as a pandas data frame. So there's another angle that I mentioned briefly earlier. So maybe you have too much data, that's one problem. Maybe you then have too much computation to do and that's a different problem. This might be in cases where you have a lot of different ensemble models to train. Maybe you've got a bunch of hyperparameter tuning you want to train, you want to go through the whole grid search, try every possible option. There's lots of different uses where this might happen. What this means is that you want to take Dask delayed functionality into account. We've already got a video on this channel about how lazy evaluation works, and I really recommend that you take a look at that if you're not familiar with it first in order to understand kind of what Dask is doing under the hood. And we're not going to cover all of that today. But the general idea is to think about it like you've got a task that you want to do, a function you want to run, and you're going to set up all of its arguments, all its parameters, get it all ready to go, package it up really nicely, and then you're going to tell it to wait until you're ready to run it. And in our case, you're going to distribute all of those little tasks to, you know, a bunch of processes if you're using just one machine or a bunch of workers if you're using multiple machines on a cluster. If you're not already familiar, a Dask cluster can be architected something like this. A client is where you as the end user will interact with the cluster. The scheduler will manage the tasks that you send to the cluster to distribute them to the workers, which are all different machines sizes that you can decide and they will run computations in parallel and then you can instruct dask at the correct time to start computing all of those things at once now you might be thinking about okay so do i need a cluster do i need multiple workers or is one going to be fine and i like to think about it this way right multitasking for a single cpu or even a single gpu is sort of the same as a human multitasking we're not actually that good at it but we try and we can kind of fake it when we need to so think about, you have a long to-do list, maybe you're moving and you've got a bunch of boxes to pack. If you get your friends to come help, then it's gonna be a lot better. You're gonna get it done faster, everything's gonna be more efficient, you can really get those tasks done in parallel. Everybody can be working on one box. However, if you are trying to multitask, so you're trying to you know, pack this box and that box at the same time, you can probably do a little faster than you would do if you just did one at a time and just plotted along. But you're not gonna be nearly as fast as having everybody all working together and we've talked about distributed data objects, but we've also talked about delayed evaluation. And there's one really interesting aspect where these sort of intersect. If you create Dask data objects, they will actually have built-in lazy evaluation. You might be thinking, what is a data object gonna evaluate? But it really comes in super handy when you're loading data from an external data location. Say it's a cloud data store, for example. 
if you have a bunch of different files that you want to load all together into your workspace for data analysis or for machine learning, the problem might be if you're using pandas, that it's going to take forever to load all that data in before you can even look at it, before you can even like tell if it's the right data, if it's going to have what you need. What Dask can do is if you're creating a Dask data frame, it won't actually load anything until, except for like the first couple of rows just to check types of data. And it will let you immediately start doing cal calculations, computations on that data frame in a lazy way so that you can get a whole bunch of stuff, including the data loading steps and run them all parallel. So the data loading steps can be parallelized along with the computations you're about to do, which is super, super helpful and saves a ton of time. So let's look at an example of that. What you're seeing on screen is a data loading and data cleaning process being run on a Dask cluster. And as you can see, it's moving really fast and processing multiple tasks at the same time, including the data loading steps themselves. So if you'd like to try Dask for yourself, if this has gotten you excited and interested in seeing what it's really like and how fast it can really be, especially working with multiple clusters of machines, we would really invite you to come try it out at Saturn Cloud. Saturn Cloud has a free tier offering 10 hours of compute and 3 hours of Dask every month. And if you want more, you just pay for what you use. We also offer an enterprise solution. Visit us at saturncloud.io today to learn more.